Your daily health habits are more important than ever. Your schedule may be loose. It may be something other than it has been for months. And yet, with all that freedom, brings more chaos. Structure provides proof freedom. I'm Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top concerns and struggles, even right now in the midst of Corona. And on this particular episode, I want to share with you daily habits or daily health habits over 50 and give you some insight into what I'm doing right now. Literally, I want to walk you through the day in the life and I mean a day in the life right now, truly. Daily health habits are definitely more important than ever. And I post this just a week deep in the coronavirus pandemic that we're in. And yet I suspect that these are not unique from yours, potentially. I do want to share them. My life for 36 years has been all about health, wellness, fitness, educating people on it, and the psychology of behavior change or mindset as we refer to it today. I sometimes take for granted that these daily health habits are known and either chosen and practiced or avoided intentionally. And then in a casual comment, I'm hit hard with the realization that it's not always a conscious conscious choice after all. You may not know. So read this, please, realizing or listen to this, realizing that I don't write with a pretentious attitude that you really care about my in-depth hour by hour, or that all of these serve you, or that you'll choose them. I do write about my daily health habits to share and to open conversation. This may be the first you've heard something. It takes us anywhere from one to dozens of times to get a message to adopt new habits ourselves. Maybe for you, this is the one time you'll remember it and choose it. And if you only make a decision about it one way or the other to use it or not, that too is progress. So first this, right now is not the time to throw in the towel. It's not the time to think you don't have control or that you're too far behind. You can start today and make a difference in your tomorrow. Invest in your health with habits, time, and yes, sometimes your money. The things I'm doing right now are for the most part, Things I do most days in ordinary times, but there are things I've dropped and those that I've dialed up. Routine and daily health habits that boost your immune system and support your mood and mindset are a must right now. I hear you seeking simplicity and clarity, so you don't need them all. Choose one or two. Look at your own daily health habits, your schedule and your energy, and your intention when you're choosing. Here's a sneak peek into my day and what I'm using and why. Above all, as you read this, I encourage you to open up your calendar. Create your own daily health habits. Include ones that you have now, ones you want to adopt in the future. And all of this, almost the transcript word for word will be in the show notes at flipping50.com forward slash daily health habits. And there's a dash between each of those. And I'll be linking inside to some of the things that I'm mentioning that I hadn't even thought I was going to include, but there are so many little things that actually make my life easier, make my appetite, more into control, make my sleep deeper, more restful. And I want to share them with you in case you too are searching for options. So here we go. My daily habits, first of all, my wake time. This usually happens right now at around 5.30 a.m. And that actually is late for me. I am admittedly an early bird. 
And yet, as my own hormonal changes in this past year accelerated and a sudden move, a loss of support, mold exposure I hadn't planned on happened, I've tried to avoid rising quite so early. Compared to you, I still may be an early riser, but 5.30 a.m. as opposed to 4 a.m. for me feels late. I'm getting and letting myself get the rest if I can, and I let my body decide. I keep the room cool, dark, quiet, and by the way, an eye mask helps, and I'm going to link to my favorite. My dog just ate mine, so I have the exact tab where I got it, another one, open right now. Oddly, the pool, swimming pool outdoors is right outside my master bedroom, and it gurgles. It's not the ocean, but hey, you know, I did dream about a beach vacation literally last night, so that kind of white noise may work for me. You have to find out whether white noise or quiet would work better for you. The biggest point here is keep your wake time the same. 365. Yep. No sleeping in. I have a hard stop wake up time, meaning I might get up earlier if I'm awake before or otherwise I know my wake up will be by 5.30 a.m. because more on that later, I go to bed to get the hours of sleep I need. I've literally tested it. So next, I'm up, I'm awake. My daily habits, coffee time. I literally covet this time. This is a deal breaker. In fact, in terms of relationships, anyone or any job, any dog that gets in the way of this quiet time for working on creative projects and ideation is not going to make the final cut. Morning is my absolute favorite time of the day, and creativity is a really big value. I like to wake up early, get a head start, and then get started with others slowly. It's part of my personal self-care. I know I'm most creative and productive between about 5 a.m. or earlier and 8 a.m. compared to any other time all day long, including more hours than that. And so I use it. I've written half a dozen books and most of those words came out between 4 a.m. and 9 a.m. Coffee has been a habit since my brother and sister-in-law introduced me to it in 1983. Not so ironically, less than two weeks ago, I was able to share one of my favorite coffees with them. Here are three ways I make this habit of coffee, more of a daily health habit than just a caffeine fix. First, there is Mashta, that powdered green tea powder, green tea leaves, basically, instead of coffee. And since I found peak teas, and that's P-I-Q-U-E teas, I haven't used anything else. The realization that too many Mashta products contain heavy metals was scary. I drink it daily and I add it to smoothies potentially. So anything I do regularly, I make sure it's safe since it's those habits that will determine optimal health. And that I will link to in the show notes. Four Sigmatic Mushroom Coffee, my jam. I have to admit, this was a new thing for me long after some of my friends had adopted it. But when they reached out to me from the company and sent me a bundle of yum to try, I fell in love with it and the ritual. I finally got it, the golden latte thing. And I love that too later in the day, maybe in the afternoon. Right now, hot liquids and a soothing treat are on my radar because, did you know this? Hot liquids that raise your core temperature can be support to an optimal immune system. Exercise, sauna, hot baths can help too. And the golden latte with turmeric offers anti-inflammatory properties too. So delicious. And I will link to that as well. And last but not least, bulletproof coffee. So when I have a regular coffee these days, it's a bulletproof. 
I'm not adding the fats or the octane, meaning the ghee or the butter to it right now, although I did that when I first converted. But the reason I love it is it is clean and you know it's safe. Coffee is one of those items that easily has mold in it. And most coffee has not been tested with the same rigor that Bulletproof Coffee has. Plus, I shared the stage with Dave Asprey, Bulletproof founder last August. And I love what he's doing for the world. He made it his mission to fix things that are broken and increase our awareness about them and then provide options that are better for us. So next up, I'm going to eat something small, potentially even before I exercise, but this is a maybe, but by this time I'm often been up for hours. So before I exercise, I make sure I've gotten something that'll take the distraction and the feelings of hunger away. Many times recently it's been nuts or seeds, even if I'm doing interval training now That's not something you can do unless you've trained your body to switch to fat burning instead of carb sugar burning. The body has a preference for carbohydrates with higher intensity exercise. And that means a small snack pre-interval training might be like a hearty rice cake for me, meaning wild rice or brown rice with a smear of nut butter on it, or my favorite a bowl of roasted sweet potato cubes. They're often in my refrigerator waiting for some other recipe with a little cinnamon and some nut butter or sun butter in it. And for longer endurance exercise, for me, I'm leaving that out here because none of us, none of us really needs whatever we might personally call endurance length exercise right now. Sure, exercise, but shorter, more intense, and then done is better right now. Shorter, low to moderate activity frequently is a moon boosting. So right now, focus on boost, not bust. Now it's time for exercise. So at this point for me, this may be about 8.30, 9 a.m., maybe 8, but I love to push the one more thing. I'm going to do one more thing before I exercise. So typically I'm exercising with our Flipping 50 Cafe members right now live streaming for community, and that happens at 9 a.m. So I've got a hard stop. That's actually a good thing because it's another source of routine. And so as I jump on there, we'll either do interval training or we'll do live strength training. So the routine, the accountability, the scheduled spot offers stability for all of us, self-included. I also cut the workouts down to make sense of daily health habits for now. Less is more. And that's always a mantra at Flipping 50. It's one of the creeds, but it's even truer of duration of exercise now. Keep it short. You can do it again. So you could do high intensity early. You could do something, a mid-afternoon walk, and you can do low and light. Do yoga with me at 4 p.m. Pacific right now. Then it's time for a shower. So right now, more than ever, it is important to have a regular schedule. No one's imposing one, potentially. You may not have to show up for work for clients or for customers. I know some of you listening to me still are, as am I. In fact, I'm busier with new clients who want virtual training sessions and support from teleconferencing more than usual. But no matter what right now, you need to get ready as if. So get dressed, be showered, look presentable, and you will actually feel much more productive as the day goes on. So that happens for me around 10 a.m. Then I'm going to eat my first meal. So it's been potentially about an hour after exercise. Perfect timing for a high protein meal. For me, first one is a smoothie. I know people talk about meal replacements. For me, that's never been going to a commercial drink that comes out of can alone. I add greens and protein and fiber, healthy fat, minimal fruit, but some other kind of carb. And there's no question, it's a meal that keeps me full for hours. I make flavors I love. I add toppings to smoothie bowls so that I don't miss texture. I'm getting it. 
and I'm not mindlessly sipping it while I'm doing something else. I sit down, I use a spoon, I enjoy it, and then I don't think about food again for hours. Then I'm connecting with others. So after I've had that first meal, I will spend a little time connecting with others. When I first pick up my phone, here's what I'm looking for in this order. Phone calls from family and friends or texts from family and friends. Then I'm checking my personal groups, mastermind groups, forums that I belong to for colleagues and friends and those app connections and then clients and customers. And I know if you're listening, you might think, well, I'm far down there on the list. But the point here that I want to go into is something in just a second. But last but not least is actually the news on COVID-19. So yes, I want to be informed, but I want to control when and what goes into me first. So that's the point. Take care of you first. Who serves you? What do you need to feel supported, connected before you can be there for anybody else? Answer that question. I will often walk the dog and then I'll be on the phone with my son or my siblings. Last night I was in the sauna, literally talking to a dear friend. And every day I would suggest make a point of connection with somebody in your world that is important to you. Maybe it's somebody you haven't talked to for a long time, but somebody that you pick up right where you left off. You may be their only connection that day. Even those with other two leggings in the house can feel isolated. You will help both of you by reaching out to somebody every day, just one person. Get informed. So I limit my news stream to find the daily update. And then I get out and off. Now you might check in again later in the day, but I try not to truly. I know that they know how to find me. I know that if I logged on, I could see immediate updates, but I want to be careful about the time that I really check in and spend very much time online. So stay informed and then stay in control of your thoughts and your time. Regularly scheduled meals. So this one applies to my lunch, and to my dinner. So right now, your body and your mind are both seeking consistency among the chaos. So while you may be working at home and have latitude for meals and you are next to the kitchen, don't be tempted to relax your routine. Don't skip meals, at least without a plan and an intermittent fasting consciousness. And don't snack unless you've got adrenal fatigue and that's a best fit for you. If I do feel like I need something, I will sometimes have a cup of bone broth in the afternoon and I'll link to my favorite brand, Kettle and Fire, so that you can take advantage of the Flipping 50 discount. And I know every little bit helps. I'm trying to eat um, early in the evening. So shortly after the community yoga sessions, in fact, I will be prepping dinner. So I know it's really early. It's what some of my friends would have called, you know, the golden corral pulling up at four for the buffet. But there's two reasons this is a really good idea. Eating earlier in the evening, number one, right after yoga, mindfulness will make you eat less food. You'll stop sooner. You're just more conscious that you're eating and you're aware of your body like maybe you're not at other times of day. And two, I'm intermittent fasting, but I'm up early. So my intermittent fasting is truly between meals and overnight, just extended periods of time. But I want a minimum of 12 hours between dinner and the first time I eat. Or basically, you've got to remember, have anything that affects your blood sugar in the morning. And a little coconut creamer that I put in my coffee will do that. So I also want to eat two to three hours after my last meal, or I want two to three hours between dinner and bedtime. I don't eat after dinner, period. Since I started that probably a decade ago, I've slept better than ever. And you know, you wake up in the morning and you kind of have that puffiness around your eyes. Well, you don't if you've given yourself time to digest, process that, and have water to help you do it. 
And again, for my clients and students who have adrenal fatigue, this is not my advice. But if you are apparently healthy and fine, it is. Next up is magnesium and C. And this goes hand in hand with dinner. So my dinner, 5 p.m., right as soon as I finish putting the dishes away, I will have another dose of vitamin C when I take my magnesium. And you can do, as far as magnesium goes, glycinate or citrate, depending on whether you need support with regularity or not, then you choose citrate. By dosing vitamin C throughout the day, you can absorb it better without running into issues with loose stools by taking too much at once. And you want to be smart if you're ramping your vitamin C intake right now. I'm taking three to 4,000 milligrams of C daily. And, you know, typically I would take one to 2,000. So I've doubled it. Um, just make sure what you have is easily absorbable. Next up is late day movement. So actually, whether it's yoga that you do with me at 4 p.m. before dinner, or maybe you take a really short walk in the evening, just be outside in the cool of the evening, calm down, might be a better time for you. So if I'm doing it before dinner, it might be something like a hike or yoga. After dinner, it's probably with the dog. But I want to move again as I transition into my evening. I've had a habit since my son was three years old of putting dinner in the oven and then either walking the dog around the block, 20 minutes is what it took, or doing yoga. And I had a 20-minute routine. It was such a thing, literally, that my son would tell me for years after that that he was hungry any time of day that I would do yoga. It's like a Pavlov's dog experiment, I guess. Then later, after dinner, maybe an hour or two, I will do a 30-minute infrared sauna session. Either that or I'll do a hot bath. Getting heated from the inside out supports your immune system and natural detox. So I'm back in it regularly again now. I'd been in it months after mold exposure too. Super helpful. A link to my favorite. My solo is a lie down just for me and I can transport it so I can easily put it out. I can also just easily put it against the wall or in a closet when I've got company who needs that room instead. And I'll link to the sunlight option I have. If I don't do the sauna for some reason, I'll take a hot bath in Epsom salts and just soak for a little longer. I'll add a little lavender essential oil and what goes up must come down. So in addition to the immune boost of the heat, a bath can also, or getting warm, can also support your sleep. As your temperature falls again after being heated, it's a signal for your body to sleep. And about 90 minutes before bed or lights out is the best time. A shower will work, but a bath is probably optimal for relaxation and a way to get sleep-enhancing magnesium through the Epsom salt absorbed into you across your skin. And then there's melatonin. So about 90 minutes before lights out, almost immediately after my bath, I'll take melatonin. I didn't used to think I needed it, even when my levels showed up lower in my hormone testing because I sleep so well, no matter what. But I recently realized there's a tie to low melatonin and breast cancer and also to low immunity. So I'm on it, three milligrams. My bedtime is nine o'clock by nine o'clock and I'm not embarrassed to tell you that sometimes I'll go to bed between seven and eight or at eight. So I'm not perfect. And last night, in fact, I waited a little bit longer. I was, and it was not for a great reason, but I was watching a movie and I knew it was going to have a happier ending than it had at the place that I would have turned it off. So I wanted the happy ending and not the drama that was going on. I sleep though so much better on a schedule than off one. No matter what, waking up at the same time is not negotiable. So there are times when, of course, I've got to catch a plane and I have to wake up earlier 
but I never wake up later. I never hit the snooze button. Promise you that. It's super important to hormone balance. So there you have it. Those are my daily health habits right now. Those show notes will be right here at flipping50.com forward slash daily health habits. There's a dash between. And I want to put this out there. So it's always right now a little precarious. So I know we're all seeking solutions and answers and we may feel a little vulnerable about the future, but there's one thing for sure. You need your health, you need your strength, you need your stamina, and you need your resilience. Right now, our Stronger One program is open. We launch April 1st. That is right on time with what typically happens. We do one every quarter. It's 12 weeks long. So we're staying on schedule right now. I'm offering that for 50% off, respectful of where we all are. And currently, you can get in it by going to flipping50.com forward slash get stronger. No spaces. And I'll put that link in the show notes as well. If you'd like access to Stronger 1, Stronger 2, Stronger 3, and Stronger 4, and so much more inside of the Flipping 50 Cafe, I've made arrangements to open up our membership, which is typically closed except for Christmas and the 4th of July. It's again, it's all about Corona and giving you options. And I know right now, literally every fitness professional is trying to throw exercise videos online. And although I love that and the generosity, I also want to caution you that you're following exercise that you really need right now. And that is immune boosting, not immune busting. Be careful with it. And if either one of these options serves you or you've got questions, please reach out. You can add them below the show link and we will be checking. You can reach out directly at support at flipping50.com. And those are all words, no numbers, flipping50.com and no spaces. So it's built for women in midlife and not all exercise is created equal. So no matter what you're doing right now, pay attention to your health habits and we will get through this stronger together. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 together.